In this video of what's happening here, we're going to look at the embedded Tomcat server. Again, we didn't have to download the Tomcat server to run our Spring application. It just came with it, right? You didn't have to find a sublet container and deploy it to the sublet container. The reason why Spring Boot decided to have that in embedded server, the embedded Tomcat server, is there are actually a couple of reasons. The first one is, of course, convenience. When you're running an application, you don't have to go download the Tomcat server, or install it, and then deploy it, and all that stuff. It just runs, and it's really easy during development time. The other advantage, and this is something that's more important in my opinion, is there are some sublet configuration steps that need to happen. Uh, sublet container configuration steps. When you deploy something to Tomcat, you have you may have to configure something on Tomcat. Most of the times the defaults work, but there might be some configuration that you would have to do to Tomcat to have it run your application. However, now the sublet container configuration, whatever that is, will now become a part of the application configuration. Just like you configure other things about your application in your source code, you also have Tomcat related configuration because everything is in one package. So as your application evolves and the configuration for your Tomcat or any other sublet container evolves, it's all together in one piece. So anybody who gets your code immediately knows what to do in order to run it. Well, they don't even have to know, they just have to execute a command. And the code base rather knows what configuration needs to happen for the sublet container in order for that application to run, which is very handy. The, which kind of leads to my third point, which is that having a standalone application really helps. It's easy to deploy, it's easy to run, and it's also easy to develop. And if you remember, this was one of the goals of the Spring Boot project in order to provide a standalone thing that can be executed. Uh, the final advantage that I should call out is that something like this, being able to execute a command and to have the whole thing start up, is useful for a microservice architecture. When you have a bunch of microservices, you don't want to have additional steps in order to deploy each microservice. If you have one big monolithic code base, well, it's okay to take the pains to say, okay, these are the steps to deploy it to Tomcat. But if you have like 10 different microservices, you don't want to deploy it 10 different times. It's going to be a pain. But with an application being standalone, you just have to run a command and have the microservice start up, which is much more convenient. And that's where the embedded Tomcat server really helps. And uh, when you build an application using Spring Boot, you just have that one command to run to start the servlet container and the application, which is really handy. So these are some of the many reasons why Spring Boot deployable is, uh, is something that includes the Tomcat server with it. And then Tomcat is the default choice again. You can choose any other servlet container, just you need to specify the dependency in your pom.xml and configure it. But then again, the point is that it's all in your code base.